Hi, everyone. We are on the third lesson in a series on church history. I won't be able to join in person today, but I wanted to record this so that we wouldn't have to take a break because we have a lot of centuries of church history to cover this summer. So thanks for joining, whether you're watching this in person or on YouTube before or afterwards. But let's move forward. Last week, we continued to learn about the first few centuries of Christianity. In particular, we talked about two things, heresy and the Gnostics and Gnosticism, and the origin of the New Testament that we have today. Now, this week, we're moving forward in history to the fourth century. In the last two weeks, we've discussed the persecution that the early church faced. And while much of it was social persecution, eventually it did lead to widespread physical persecution of the church. In the year 2049, Emperor Decius signed a decree that made Christianity illegal. Do you remember why? There are a couple of reasons. And first off, it wasn't so much that Christianity was illegal, but the law that he signed made Caesar worship the official religion of the Roman Empire. Though the Roman Empire was vast and diverse, he figured that one unified religion would bring all of its people together. And since Caesar embodied all that was good about Rome, he was to be worshipped. So every year, all citizens were required to make an offering at the Temple of Caesar burn a pinch of incense, and declare with their lips, Caesar is Lord. Now, they only had to do this once a year, and then they could worship whoever they wanted. The problem, though, was that Christians would not do this. They would not say, Caesar is Lord, because they believed only Jesus is Lord. And because they would not bow to Caesar, they were arrested and persecuted as revolutionaries. Now, Emperor Decius died two years later, but the, the subsequent emperors were just as bad for Christianity. One of them, Diocletian, led a particularly bloody campaign against Christians, the most severe persecution in church history. While for 18 years of his reign, he seemed to care less about the church, he suddenly ordered a vicious persecution of Christians, even though his wife and daughter were Christians, and, and he had Christians in his imperial court, he ordered them to be purged. Church buildings were destroyed, scriptures were burned, and church leaders were publicly executed. And Diocletian's successor, Galerius, was even more zealous in his persecution. It got to be so violent that the pagans themselves were sick of the bloodshed. Seeing so many people die and suffer had a tremendous effect on public opinion. Most people just wanted it to be over. And eventually, on his deathbed, Emperor Galerius issued an Edict of Toleration. And with that, the Roman persecution of Christians came to an end. Galerius died. But on his death, there was a great struggle for power. Who was going to be the emperor now? Enter Constantine. Constantine was the son of a Roman soldier named Constantius Chlorus and a Christian woman named Helena. Galerius wanted Constantine to succeed him as emperor, but among others, a man named Maxentius challenged Constantine. In the spring of 312, Constantine and his army waged war against Maxentius, who was occupying Rome. And just outside the walls of Rome was the Milvian Bridge. And it was there that Constantine first met the armies of Maxentius, who were far more militarily superior. Seeing how strong they were, he had to decide, do I go into battle or do I turn back? 
And in this moment, Constantine, a pagan, remembered the God of his Christian mother, and he turned to God for help. In a vision before the battle, he saw a cross in the sky, and the words, in this sign, conquer. And this convinced him to advance. And on October 28th, 312, he was victorious, and he attributed his success to the power of Christ. Many people look at this as Constantine's conversion to Christianity, but he was still a fairly pagan emperor. He conspired against and murdered political enemies, just like a good Roman emperor does. He continued to consider himself the head of the state religious cult. However, in his reign, he did a lot to advance Christianity, and he favored it openly. Under Constantine, Christian ministers had the same rights and tax-free status as pagan priests. He made Sunday a public holiday, and he forever outlawed the use of crucifixion as a means of execution. Several beautiful church buildings were constructed in his time. His children were brought up to be Christians and began to adopt the Christian lifestyle. And finally, on his deathbed in 337, he himself was baptized, and he died not in the emperor's robes, but in his baptismal robes. One of the most important events in Constantine's reign for Christians was the Edict of Milan in 313. The edict reversed Decius's proclamation 64 years earlier and allowed for religious freedom in the Roman Empire. In addition, any property stolen or confiscated during the time of persecution was returned to the church. And so within a lifetime, Christians went from being considered enemies of Rome to being favored, even pampered by the state. It was suddenly and very prominently in the public eye. So the question I want to ask is, what effect do you think that this had on the church? Now, I considered um, for this video, you know, pausing like, like a children's show, and, and saying, well, what effect do you think this had on the church? Great idea, but you don't, you don't have to answer, um, but think about this question. If you were a Christian in that time, going from persecution to the opposite, what would that be like? Well, there were some advantages, obviously, to this new situation, like the first off being that they no longer had to worship in secret and in fear. They could preach and evangelize publicly without fear of getting arrested. And they had the stamp of approval from the emperor himself. So all in all, it was <laughs> a much better time to be a Christian under Caesar than it was under the Roman emperors before him. Uh, so the question then is, how would you feel to be a Christian in those days? Well, we know from their writings um, how they felt, and they were very optimistic and hopeful. The church history, uh, excuse me, the church historian Eusebius said that Constantine was viewed as the ideal Christian ruler, and he envisioned a new age of Christianity. In addition, the Roman Empire had already united the world politically, economically, and culturally. The Great Commission seemed like it was that much closer to being fulfilled. If the Roman Emperor and the Roman Empire was on its side, then the conversion of the entire world seemed very near. However, as we know, that didn't quite happen. Because with the advantages, there were also some disadvantages to the Roman situation. Um, first off, is that Constantine saw himself as 
not just the head of Rome, not just the head of the Caesar cult, but he saw himself as the head of the Christian church, which means that the church had to obey every official pronouncement, even if it conflicted with the church and its teachings. But also, before Constantine, the church consisted of only the most dedicated believers, willing to worship God despite persecution. Now, streams of people were entering the church, and that may seem like a great thing, but many of them were simply politically motivated, or they really weren't interested, and they were still steeped in pagan religions. Christianity was just the latest fad, or maybe they're doing it just to get the tax credits. Um, and so this is causing some problems, as we'll see. The church faced the threat of becoming shallow or too secular. Pagan influence was high, as new converts wanted a good blend of this new Christianity and their traditional pagan beliefs. We talked a little bit about this um, last week with Gnosticism, which tempted, uh, tried to blend Greek philosophy with Christian beliefs, and it, it, it's not a good fit. But also, for the first time, Christianity could be misused for political purposes. And we're going to be seeing this a lot throughout the next several centuries. And so the church struggled with this newly found power and prominence. The, this continued even more in, when in uh, the year 380, Emperor Theodosius made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire. There are many complications due to this, but next week we'll discuss how the church eventually split over this. We'll talk about the Church of the West, the Roman Catholic Church, and the Church of the East, the Eastern Orthodox Church. But that's more for next week. Thanks for tuning in.